Hi, I'm Fernando Pereira from UFMG in Brazil, and today we shall talk about program slicing. That's a subject that brings aesthetic analysis very close to software engineering, as program slices are used, among other things, to debug and understand programs. The slice regards a statement within a program. This is the subset of the program that affects the execution of that statement. We call this statement a slice criterion, using uh, jargon introduced by Weiser in uh, 1979. We shall adopt the definition of slices due to Weiser, as I said, and in that paper, a slice was defined with respect to a statement S as the subset of the program whose execution produces on S the same effect as the execution of the entire program. So, in a sense, a slice is like a sub-program, I mean, a subset of instructions within a program. Slicing is good for debugging, for instance. If we know that a bug is surfacing at some statement, we can use the, that statement as a slice criterion to reason about the bug. That reduces the size of the program that we need to take into consideration. Another thing, program slicing is useful to implement information flow analysis, like tainted flow analysis, for instance. We can find which part of a program is influenced by some statement or which statements can be influenced by some program part. Slicing is also good for automatic parallelization because two independent slices can always run in parallel. To explain how a slice can be computed, let's use this program as an example. Let's try to find out the slice of the last assignment, I mean the assignment of max r here. Does this slice contain the return statement? If you want, you can stop the video and think about the program. Again, the slice with respect to this criterion here is the subset of this function that will always yield the same effect here as the entire function. Here's the CFG of that program. Notice that we will be working in ESSA form, so every variable in our program will have a single definition site. To compute a program slice, we compute backward dependencies. There exist two types of dependencies. First, we have data dependencies. A variable v depends on a variable u if the program contains an instruction that reads u to define v. And then we have control dependencies. We say that a variable v depends on another variable p if p is used in a conditional test, that is, a predicate, whose branch determines if v will be assigned or not. We can represent the dependencies using a data structure called the, dependence, the data dependence graph. This graph has a vertex for every variable in the program, and we have an edge from vertex u to vertex v if the variable v depends on the variable u. There are four questions on the right. Perhaps you could stop the video and try to answer them. And by the way, we call this a data dependence graph due to historic reasons, but this graph contains both control and data dependencies. Considering that, uh, that example that we had seen before, this is the dependence graph. Here we are considering only data dependencies. To compute the slice of the last assignment, which is labeled 23, right here, tiny, in the example, we can traverse the dependence graph backwards, starting at label 23 again. The blue instructions are the instructions that we visit in this backward traversal. If we map those instructions back into source code, this is the subset of the program that we would get for the slice that uses only data dependencies. Question, is uh, this slice executable? 
Can you check if this program can actually be compiled and if it runs? The program will compile and it's and it's, uh, this program that compiles is executable. But this program is not a correct slice of pointer max r equals max. Uh, down here, the statement down here. We are still missing control dependencies. So, I mean, if you take the boldface program and see which value it deposits into max r, you see that this value is not the same as the entire program we would put here. The usual definition of control dependencies uses the notion of post dominance. A node B controls a node BC if two conditions are true. First, B dominates BC. Second, BC does not post dominate B. Considering control dependencies, this is our new dependence graph. Notice that we have three predicates in this program. I have colored each one with a different color. Then we can see which control dependencies they create. So if you try again, it's time considering control dependencies, we get these nodes in orange as the backward slice of label 23. It's almost the entire program actually. And here we have the slice mapped back into source code. As you will be able to verify if you want, this program is compilable, it executes correctly, and it computes the right value of pointer max r. And with this example, we are done with the definition of program slice. In the next class, we will present some alternative definitions, and after that, we shall talk about how to compute the slice.